Hello, I'm now going to talk about the domain name system, often shortened to just DNS. So, domain names, I'm sure you've heard of what they are, but before we talk about those, let's just perhaps recap a really, really important fact. So to communicate with a device over the internet, you need to know its IP address. The IP address looks like something resembling this. This one is a version four address. We've got four decimal numbers with dots. There is a longer version with colons and hexadecimal instead, but it's a number which we can use to contact a device. We need to have it because the IP address tells us roughly where in the world the device is. Without it, we wouldn't know how to communicate with the device. If you didn't know somebody's home address, how on earth would you send a parcel to them? You couldn't really. Now, the issue is most of us are not gonna be using IP addresses very often because memorizing IP addresses would be very difficult. They're not exactly the most attractive and easy to learn thing. They're designed for computers, not really for humans. We much prefer easier to remember names. So. When we are communicating with web servers, we instead use domain names. So a domain name is an alternative to an IP address. And that's something most users of the internet have got no idea about. So websites are held on web servers. Every web server needs to have an IP address. But the point is that would be really, really hard to learn. So it's much easier to use a domain name instead because a domain name is written in English We've got the ability to name it how we want. You know, you can use your company name, you can use a catchy name, you can use .com, .co.uk, things people recognize much better than an IP address. So this little box shows a URL. A URL specifies where to locate a resource. The actual domain name part is between the forward slashes and before the folders, the www.example.com bit. That's the domain name. The first part, is saying the protocol we're using and the last part is specifying the actual resource the domain name the middle bit is what is representing the IP address now from a computer's perspective the domain name is unhelpful because it doesn't tell us anything about where the device is located right google.com is fine but how do you know where to get to Google you don't you've got to know its IP address so the DNS the domain name system is what goes on behind the scenes to translate between domain names and IP addresses. Your computer uses the DNS to find out the IP address of the websites you are visiting. Now this screenshot is of my computer on command line. I'm using a tool called NSLOOKUP. I've written NSLOOKUP google.co.uk. What this tool does is use the DNS to find out the IP address of the domain I put after the tool name. So the text here, it says server cache1.service.virginmedia.net. It gives an IP address. And then it says uh, google.co.uk and it gives two addresses for Google. One version uh, six, one version four, both are IP addresses. So what this has done has contacted a server at Virgin Media. Virgin Media is my broadband provider. The server's IP address is this. But what that server has told us is that Google has got these two IP addresses. So what I could have done, I could have used, say, this bottom IP address to contact Google directly. I could put this into my browser and contact Google directly. Now, you might be able to try that in your browser now, and it may or may not work. Google often switch around their servers quite often. But when I tried it earlier, it did work. So I could use that IP address to contact, but much, much better for me is to use the domain name because it's much easier to learn. Now the process is not quite as simple. I can't just contact Google directly. Instead, as this tool is showing, I've got to contact a DNS. A DNS is a domain name server. So confusingly, we've got two acronyms, both are DNS. So DNS can stand for domain name system or domain name server bit confusing. But this DNS will hopefully tell us the IP address of Google. In this case, that is what this bottom line is. The DNS server is telling us this IP address. Then afterwards, once I get it, I can use the IP address to contact Google. 
So when you type in google.co.uk, that is what's going on behind the scenes. The DNS is converting it for you and giving you the correct IP address for Google. Now, no shock, but this is quite a complicated system behind the scenes, a lot is going on. But actually the structure is something we've covered before. The structure is working in a client server network. So let me go over the steps, focusing on the two words client and server. So the first step, when you are contacting a website, your web browser is acting as a client. That's you know Google Chrome or Safari or whatever it is. And that client will connect to a DNS server to check whether the domain name is in its database. That server is just a big database with lots of domains and lots of IP addresses. The next step is to see if the DNS server um, has it. So if it has got it in its database, it will send it to the user. But if it doesn't have it, the DNS server itself will then act as a client and connect to other DNS servers until one finds it. So picture this, right? The DNS server is checking to see if the domain name is in its database. If it isn't, it won't give up. It will then act as a client like your browser did and ask other DNS servers. So there are loads of DNS servers scattered about, owned by people like Sky and Virgin Media and BT and Google and Microsoft, big companies. So it will keep asking until one DNS server finds it. Now, when a server has the IP address, it will return it to the original client, which was the web browser. And that will enable the user to connect to the website because the user's got the IP address and so can connect directly to the host. So a lot goes on behind the scenes when you are connecting to websites. The DNS is the system which does this.